Hello, today we are going to be talking about how to duel and actually win in the Shadowlands pre-patch as a Frost DK. This is going to be the first of a series of Shadowlands pre-patch Frost DK guides and we are doing this because the pre-patch is right around the corner. It's either going to come this coming Tuesday or it will come on the following Tuesday, but either way we're getting pre-patch in the next two weeks. So, to be prepared for that, let's go ahead and hop into this video and learn how you can duel and how you can do basic PvP on a Frost DK. Alright, so now we are in game and I want to tell you guys how you can maximize your DPS. This is first and foremost. I have an entire video on this topic. If you want to go in depth, I'm going to leave a link to that in the description down below. It'll also be up here, uh, up there in the corner of the video. So if you want to check that out, go ahead and check it out. But the TLDR is there's two main rotations to Frost DK. One is the weaving. This is where you use an obliterator two and then a frost strike and you use another obliterate. Go your howling blast and another frost strike. And then you come in with more obliterates. This reduces your overall downtime quite significantly. It also allows you to have more resources just kind of laying around to use chains of ices to use your remorseless winter this is a less bursty kind of rotation but ultimately the results are that you will have more consistent damage you'll have more resources to play with for more chains of ices and you'll have more consistent obliterates for that more consistent damage the other play style is dumping, and this is where you use all your runes on those obliterates, and then you dump all your frost strikes, just like that. What this results in is large dead zones eventually. This is it's like a diminishing return kind of thing. The longer you dump, the more of a dead zone you're going to eventually come to. It'll also be more frequent dead zones. And so ultimately, what I recommend doing is going to a dumping play style whenever you are bursting and sticking to a consistent weaving play style whenever you are going between goes this way like i said you have resources to play with you can keep your chains of ice up you have no problem using that remorseless winter you have more runic power for death strikes and more runic power for any other thing that you might need to possibly do with that runic power this is the very very slight littlest tldr so if you want to learn more about how to maximize your damage using your rotation and how it all kind of plays together and what different abilities are uh, kind of affect your rotation then I suggest you watch that video. Outside of our base rotation, you're gonna wanna be keeping that Chains of Ice up all the time. You never want that Chains of Ice to fall off your target. The moment you see that Chains uh, image drop off of them, you wanna go ahead and reapply it just like that. You never, ever, ever wanna leave your Chains of Ice off a target. This guarantees that we have high uptime and just make sure that no one's gonna be doing any kind of kiting business on you, which is no good. I even do this for melee, and yes, it is extremely worth it to do for melee they will kite you too. And on top of that, I always use Remorseless Winter on cooldown. I never once let myself go a moment without having Remorseless Winter up if I can possibly use it. All right, so now that we have our base rotation down, let's talk about how to actually heal. So healing is different than it was in BFA. In BFA, healing relied entirely on your Death Strike. Death Strike healed for quite a bit, and it was a good ability to press often we did it a lot death strike spamming has been the meta for quite some time now but in the shadowlands pre-patch and beyond we are seeing a complete meta shift away from death strike so death strike actually does 50 percent less healing in combat in the shadowlands pre-patch and in shadowlands so what this means is that death strike only heals you for five percent of your maximum health instead of ten percent of your maximum health this means that death strike hits like a wet noodle this means that it heals like a wet noodle, and this means that you do not want to be relying on your death strike. It will bury you. It will absolutely bury you, and you will be dead. It is nice to be you to throw in every now and again, especially when you have more HP rather than less HP. It will definitely help you, but the lower HP you get, the more of death striking is just going to leave you in this perpetual, elongated state of, I'm going defensive so I can hopefully get offensive, but death strike doesn't heal enough, to really get you out of that defensive mode and get you back into going offensive this ultimately means that you're not doing more damage and the enemy is capable of healing passively since every class in shadowlands so far has insane healing capabilities so what you need to do is you need to focus on keeping your offensive pressure high even when you're healing so let's talk about how to do that our most important healing cooldown is now lichborn 
Now, something to keep in mind about Lichborn is, of course, it turns you one dead, which has some implications, and then you're able to use Death Coil on yourself to heal yourself. Now, something to keep in mind is that Death Coil actually will scale with your strength. So if I go and pop my cooldown, my Mac, my, uh, so if I go and pop my Trinket here, which increases my primary stat by 162, what we'll see is Death Coil is going to go from 373 and, six, and 1966 HP, popping it, to 475 damage and 2500 health. Death Coil actually scales with your strength. On top of this, Lichborn now gives you 10% leech. What this means is you want to be offensive when you Lichborn. Why this is important is because if in the past, the way that we would oftentimes see people Lichborning was Chains of Icing, Kiting, and using Lichborn. This was a valid way to Lichborn back in the day. But now that it is based on your strength, now that it has 10% leech, you actually want to heal yourself while you burst. So we're gonna go ahead and do a little damage to ourselves. Okay, maybe more damage than that. And then I'm going to show you guys what you can do with a Lichborn. All right, so we're now at 38% HP. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right out of the gate. So I'm going to burst. I'm going to go ahead and pop Lichborn. And I'm going to hit Obliterate. And I'm going to spam Lichborn Death Coils into myself. Now what we're seeing is my health's going up quite a bit. And we're now back at full HP. Now at the same time, my offensive pressure has been through the absolute freaking roof. Now a Lichborn's gone. Now, if you do this properly, you can get a full HP heal. And the way that you do it properly is by pairing Lichborn either with your offensive cooldowns or at the very least waiting until you get this unholy strength proc from your Rune of the Fallen Crusader, which increases your strength by 15%. This will give you the biggest Lichborn death coils that you can possibly achieve, and you can easily heal for more than your entire health bar when you do it properly. As for the Lichborn macro, I'm going to have that linked in the description down below so you can just copy paste it for yourself and I'll also show it on the screen right now. Outside of Lichborn though, we still have other healing options. Primarily we have Icebound Fortitude which still makes your Death Strike heal for more damage. This is the time that is most worth it for you to just be pumping those death strikes out is during your Icebound Fortitude. And then also we have in our talents death pact and this is a very important one for two hand because once again it allows you to get that instant heal and you don't have to sacrifice any offensive pressure or any kind any, anything like that in order to do it this is huge especially until we level up and we get ourselves sacrificial pact at level 54 when it comes to using death strike you want to try and keep using death strike to a fairly bare minimum like i said if you need to use death strike you need to use death strike it's especially better to use it when you have more HP rather than less HP because this just kind of helps you to keep ahead a little bit better. But if you need to use it, you need to use it. But your goal is definitely going to be how can I not use Death Strike or how can I use Death Strike as little as possible to win this duel. That's going to keep your offensive pressure as high as possible and it will definitely pay off dividends down the road when it's time to actually win some duels. Now for our burst, not much has changed here. You want to go ahead and run Blood of the Enemy. You want to get up on a target. You're going to want to pop that Blood of the Enemy and then go into a Pillar of Frost. So you get that Blood of Enemy uh, crit for your uh, Frost Ult's Indignation. You're going to go, go into a Chill Streak if you're playing against people with pets or multiple targets. If you're playing against someone like a Rep Paladin who has no pets, nothing for you to really Chill Streak off of, then we will cover that in the Talent section. But Chill Streak is great for going up against other DKs who have, lot, who have their pets, even Frost DKs who have their Rays Undead. Uh, it's good for any class that has any kind of pet that you could possibly chill streak off of. From there, you're going to want to use your Frost, uh, your Frostworm's Fury whenever it makes sense. I like trying to use it as an execute ability or any time that I want to like really incorporate on a stun. As far as using your stun, you're going to want to use it to punish mistakes. You're also going to want to use it to block and waste people's entire burst cooldowns. And it's going to be important for actually securing kills. As for your raise dead, this is something that you're gonna want to use with your burst. It's something that you're going to want to put up whenever you're facing rogues or anything that's gonna stealth and try to, you know, kind of reset on you. If a rogue stuns you or blinds you, your pet can stay on the rogue and keep it in combat. There's a lot of different little things like that you can do. The raised dead will also, uh, at one point during its duration, will stun your target. You have no control over this, but generally it picks its times pretty well, in my opinion. And so that is very useful as well. 
When it comes to your Pillar of Frost, you're going to want to be weaving since we're going to be running the Obliteration talent, which I'll cover once again a little more in the talent section of this video. So whenever you pop your Pillar of Frost, you're going to want to go into with a Frost Strike to get that Killing Machine proc into an Obliterate, into a Frost Strike, into an Obliterate, into an Alien Blast, into an Obliterate, into a Frost Strike, into an Obliterate. And you just get over and over and over again Killing Machine procs. Over and over and over again. And that's how you're going to want to get the most out of your Pillar of Frost. Now that we've talked about all that stuff, now let's talk a little bit about stat priority. So for two hand Frost DK, your stat priority is going to be haste over verse. As you can see, I am not running that build because I was not prepared to run that build before the pre-patch started. So I am running mastery over verse. Your goal is to have as much haste as you possibly can and then have as high a versatility as you possibly can. And having 19%, if you have less versatility than me, then you are in trouble. You're gonna want around 30% uh, in combat with your conflict and strife proc some dk's have near 40 percent so you're gonna want to have as much versatility as you can possibly have and mastery is more of the dual wield uh kind of thing our obliterates do not scale with mastery yet not until later not until in the actual shadowlands expansion so two hand pretty much gets almost nothing out of mastery all mastery does is it props up your frost damage so for those of you who have haste sets, make sure you have as much haste as possible, as much versatility as possible, and if you're like me, then just run the best thing you can get, make sure you have versatility. Now this wouldn't be one of my videos if we didn't talk a little bit about weapon swapping. Weapon swapping in duels is extremely powerful, and the main one that you're going to be using is Sanguination and Hysteria on a dual wield set. So I have a macro, I'll put that in the description down below, I'll also show it on the screen right now. And all it does is it just tells my character to equip my dual wield weapons and it makes sure that they go into the correct slots. So you just press that button. Now what these do is Hysteria, I keep it on my main hand weapon, and what it does is it increases your maximum rune power by 20 and it makes your attacks have a chance to increase rune power generation by 20% for 8 seconds. This procs almost immediately the moment that you hit anything with it, get almost guaranteed. And so the proc chance on that's amazing. And then the other one that I use is Sanguination. And what Sanguination does is it makes your Death Strike deal increased damage based on the target's missing health. And this is a one-to-one -one ratio. If they are missing 70% health, then your Death Strike will deal 70% increased damage. Then also, when you fall below 35% HP, then it will heal you for 48% of your maximum HP over 8 seconds. All right, so we had to come to Acarus so I could properly show to you guys what this looks like. So when we hit this guy, he's going to want to hit us. And when he knocks us below 35% HP, then our beautiful, beautiful uh, Sanguination is going to proc just like that. And it will heal us for 48% of our health over that time period. You do not want to swap away from your dual wield weapons until after you have received the heal. If you swap away mid proc, you will lose that proc. So once you have received that full proc, you're able to go back to your main hand weapon. Now, the reason that we are running Sanguination and Hysteria is because while you're waiting for that heal to do its thing, you're gonna wanna be pumping out Death Strikes. You're gonna wanna be pumping out Death Strikes as much as you possibly can during that Sanguination proc because it will do increased damage based on your target's missing health, which will help alleviate the problem of Death Strike uh, hitting like a wet noodle and it will help you get some more health. Now, something to keep in mind about the Sanguination proc though, is it leaves this nasty five minute debuff called Satiated, and this will follow you into an arena. It does not reset between arenas when you enter or leave. So it's something that you have to play around. The only way to get rid of it is to kill yourself or die by some other means. That's the only way to get rid of this debuff and it will take get rid of it and you'll be able to immediately use it. So what I do is I'll oftentimes kill myself right after duels so that I can just go ahead and use it in the next duel. As far as how weapon swapping actually works, I have an entire video dedicated to this once again, linked in the description down below and up here in the corner of the video, up there in the corner of the video. And basically, it does have a global cooldown, but is a separate weapon global cooldown. I'm going to come over here and hit something that won't hit me back, and I'll show you. So if we are hitting here and we hit our button, boom, on get our two-hand weapon, then we are now using a two-hand weapon. The weapons share a global cooldown, but it's actually not the same global cooldown that triggers for your abilities. If I hit my obliterate now and I swap over to a weapon, boom, 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 then right there. As you can see, everything just went good. We hit the obliterate and we swapped at the exact same time. So 
even though there is a global cooldown on this it doesn't actually reduce your damage in any kind of way the main thing you got to con concern yourself with is making sure you don't swap away in the middle of a proc the moment you swap away in the middle of a proc you will lose that proc now for dueling this is really all the weapon swapping i really suggest doing because it can have a negative effect on your pressure if you are doing it too often now the only other one that i would really throw in for like consideration is spell boarding and i do like using this especially against mages i have yet to lose a single duel even to arcane mages who are one of the most broken classes in the shadowlands pre-patch uh, since using my spell warding consistently against them it does mean that we do a little less consistent pressure a little less burst damage because we don't have unholy strength but i actually just leave my spell warding on the entire time except for maybe when i'm bursting and i have good uptime and this results in me basically guaranteed to win every single match against every single mage that i've so far dueled on this pre-patch ptr the way that I swap my weapons, for those of you who are wondering, is I have them bound to F1, F2, and F3. My two-hand weapons, they're not macros. I literally just have my two-hand weapon. I click it out of my bag, and I drag it onto the bar. There's no macro. It's just clicked out of my bag, dropped onto the bar, and I hit F1, puts on my Getaku, my main, my, hand, my main hand weapon with my Fallen Crusader. I press F2. That is the macro. This is for the dual wield set. Once again, in the description, and I'll show it on the video once again right now. And I press that and it puts me into there. Or if I want to go spell warding, I press F3 and it takes me over to that. Now, once again, I want to be very clear that it does look like it gives you the global cooldown down here. But if you actually use your obliterate first and then swap, look, boom. I used my obliterate while I was swapping weapons. So if you use the ability first and then swap your weapon second, then it's basically no global cooldown. All right. So now that we know about weapon swapping, now that we talked about the basics now that we talked about healing it's time to talk a little bit about talents before we get into me going and doing a duel or two for you guys and walking you through how i'm actually winning these duels first off we have inoxorable assault this is just hands down the best option dps wise on this entire row it makes a very big measurable difference and you just absolutely 100 percent always want to run inoxorable assault there is a night and day difference if you don't believe me go and test it it is just hands down better over in the level 25 row runic attenuation and murder sufficiency are both very good they pretty much perform within the margin of error of each other with testing numerous times over the course of this pre-patch but murder sufficiency uh so philosophy wise does make more sense with the two-hand play style and so this is what i will be recommending to you guys however if you're looking at going into more long form combat dampening meta arenas uh pve then runic attenuation in my book still comes out ahead of murderous efficiency murderous efficiency is just a little bit better especially in high octane quick duels for the level 30 row in duels you're always going to want to run asphyxiate you're never going to want to run anything else asphyxiate is your baby for the level 35 row you're going to want to run avalanche for the increased pressure once again just like runic attenuation versus murder sufficiency frozen pulse actually outperforms avalanche over time but in short high octane combat then avalanche does more damage is only when you get into battles that last a longer than a few minutes a couple to a few minutes two to three minutes that frozen pulse actually begins to pull ahead for the level 40 row as we talked about earlier you're gonna want to run death pact you want that instant healing you want any kind of healing that doesn't have an impact on your defense on your offensive pressure you want that that's your that's what it's all about for two hand now the way that you use you use this without suffering too much of a penalty from that 30 percent absorb on your incoming healing for the next 15 seconds is i recommend using it with higher health rather than lower health I find that when I use this, when I say I have only 25% HP left, then basically I'm in too much healing debt to really follow up on it with any other kind of healing, and I just die. But if you use this with more like 45% HP, then you get almost a full health heal, and what happens is you have actual time. You have buffer before you actually, you know, die to use up that healing absorb, to get out of that healing debt. You have time and that's what it's all about with your death pact is you want to have time i like to save this for one of my last defensive kind of measures the only thing that i might use after it is my is my actual weapon swap so 
what this looks like is I'll hit 45% HP if my Lichborn, my Icebound Fortitude um, are both on cooldown. I don't really have defensive cooldowns left. Then I will Death Pact then. And then whenever I get low health again, around 35%, then I'll swap over to my Sanguination set for that giant heal. And by the time that happens, generally, you are already out of the Death Pact healing debt or you're very close to being out of it and Sanguination will go ahead and take you the rest of the way out of it. But it's very important that you don't let that debt bury you because it will absolutely bury you if you use it at the wrong time. For your level 45 row, you're going to want to run Gathering Storm because Hypothermic Presence is currently busted. I will be making a video on Hypothermic Presence the day that it is fixed, but currently on the PTR, it does not work at all. It literally just doesn't work. It hasn't worked for a few weeks now, and I don't know why Blizzard hasn't fixed it. But so if it's still broken when this stuff goes live, you're going to want to run Gathering Storm. But if it is fixed, like I said, I'll make a video and you can test it pretty easily. Just pop, pick it, pop it, see if it reduces the cost of your Frost Strike. If it does, then run this. And what you want to do with Hypothermic Presence is you want to macro it in with your Lichborn, and this allows you to get one to two more death coils than you would otherwise, and this will maximize your healing. When you pair this with Lichborn, you will easily, easily be able to heal yourself for about 120% of your maximum health, more than filling your health bar. As for our level 50 talent row, you're going to want to run Obliteration and nothing else. Ice Cap is nice for like consistent pressure over time, especially since we still have Frostwell's Indignation as a right trait, but that's not what we're going for in, a re in, in duels. We are going for Obliteration. We want as much Obliterate damage, as many killing machines as we possibly can in as little amount of time as possible. And as I showed you guys in the beginning of the video, and I'll go ahead and showcase it one more time for you guys, is that whenever you burst, you're going to want to hit that Pillar of Frost and immediately immediately go into a frost strike get that killing machine proc use it frost strike killing machine proc frost strike killing machine proc frost strike or actually howling blast killing machine proc <laughs> howling blast again killing machine proc frost strike oh it's over so that's what you're going to want to do and that is the weaving play style you're going to want to do that to maximize how many killing machine procs you could possibly get that's super important otherwise if you don't do that you might as well not even take obliteration at all it will do nothing for you so that is how you want to use your obliteration to its maximum effect as for our honor talents i've been running heart stop aura dome of the ancient shadow which is a new pvp trait new pvp talent and what it does it increases the spell damage reduction effect of your anti-magic zone by 60 percent this is massive against any spellcaster this is massive against any melee that uses magic damage i'm looking at you you sub rogues and you unholy dks this oh and rep paladins this is a lifesaver. You're going to be running this most of the time. The only time you don't really want to take this is basically versus warriors. Then finally, I like to take Chill Streak a lot. But as I said earlier in the video, you only want to take this against classes that have pets. This could be other Frost DKs when they use their Raise Dead ability. This could be Unholy DKs. This could be Hunters. This could be Shadow Priests when they pop their, vo their different pets and stuff. This could be a lot of different classes. But if they do not have something that you can possibly Chill Streak off of, I highly suggest going and picking something like Necrotic Aura or Transfusion if you really need extra healing, although do be careful with that because you risk running your, like spreading your runic power too thin and focusing too much on a defensive playstyle. And once again, this just kills your offensive pressure and you're never going to do enough damage to actually win a duel because every class in the PTR, every last one, has way, 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 way more healing than they have in any recent expansion that I can think of. It's, it's truly amazing how much healing every single class is capable of putting out right now. So I highly suggest sticking to Chill Streak or Necrotic Aura. There's some certain use cases for Death Chill, you know, with Hunters and stuff where you want to get those roots. Same thing with Monks. I uh, don't really suggest Dead of Winter too much. It's just a little meme -y, people realize. And then it also puts your one of your number one damaging abilities, Remorseless Winter, on a longer cooldown, which is never too good. Um, other than that, Delirium's great in Arena and Battlegrounds, but in Duels, I don't really suggest it too much. Dark Simulacrum, if you like Dark Simulacrum, then it is, of course, an amazing ability to use against casters. You can steal all kinds of wonderful things, and I definitely highly recommend that if you know how to use it properly. 
And that's pretty much it for our PvP talents. You're going to be running some combination of stuff that I just mentioned, but this right here is pretty much my go-to build. As for your essences, you're going to want to run Blood of the Enemy. It does a ton of burst damage when you use it. It allows you to get more crits and it increases that crit chance. It's just great. It gives you some haste. Ultimately, this is just an amazing dueling essence. It will definitely help you do a lot more damage in your burst. As for your minor essences, I'm running Conflict and Strife. That's pretty much like you need to have Conflict and Strife. Uh, I run Breath of the Dying. This is amazing for putting out as much pressure as possible in the execute window and helping you secure those kills. And then Memory of Lucid Dreams is amazing because it reduces our dead zones, increases our consistency, and gives us more runes and resources to play with. As far as right traits, I'm running Frostwell's Indignation on every single piece of gear and Icy Citadel every chance I get. Outside of that, Frozen Tempest isn't bad, Latent Chill isn't bad, uh, Killer Frost isn't bad. But your Frostwelt's Indignation and your Icy Citadel are the Azerite traits that are the most important to you. And a final little tip for you guys is this. It's the Inherited Insignia of the Alliance. It is an heirloom piece, and this is the only way that you can actually have a trinket in the Shadowlands pre-patch. They are no longer a part of the talents. As you may have noticed, it's gone. There's nothing here. If you want a trinket, which you're going to want a trinket for most classes, you have to have the heirloom and so you come over to your heirloom tab over here you scroll to the very end and you have the inherited insignia of the horde and the inherited insignia of the alliance they're extremely low item level it kind of sucks but it's the only way you're going to get a pvp trinket in this pre-patch all right so now that you guys know how to do all this stuff let's go ahead and go do a few duels so i can show you what it all looks like in action all right, so we're going to try and duel this mage. You're going to go invis. I'm going to use my death and decay to try and knock them out, but they're not going to fall for it. So we're going to go ahead and wait until they decide to open up on us. All right, they hit us with the polymorph. She's over there. We're just going to wait. And they're going to start casting frostball on us. We're going to go and grip them in. A stunner. And we're going to burst. Get my pet out. Pop death's advance. Hit them with the uh, Frostwords Fury. I want to break that shield off as fast as possible so that when I get on there, I am instantly going through that shield. She went ahead and popped her Temporal Shield, whatever it is, and we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to go ahead and pop our uh, Lichborn, and we're going to go ahead and start pumping those into ourselves. We're going to Ice Block. I'm going to build up some Runic Power off of that Ice Block just so I can do more Lichborns. It's very unfortunate for us that they Ice Blocked right then, but that's just how it goes. We got ourselves some healing, though. I'm going to go ahead and use my Death Pact. We're going to stay on here. I'm going to grip, and I'm going to kick that. All right. We're not going to grip. We're going to go and stun right here. I'm going to burst again. We're going to go ham. We're going to go ham into this Frost Mage. Don't see a lot of Frost Mages on the PTR. I believe there's actually like one of only two I've ever dueled. I'm going to go and grip in again. We're going to go and immediately chains of ice we want to keep that chains of ice up at all times very 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 important they're going to blink here in a moment there it is i'm going to i'm going to go in ams and use my death's advance and we're going to get back on to that mage they're going to use our second ice block i'm going to go ahead and death strike a little bit off and okay that didn't work that didn't work at all that's interesting to know if you ice if you okay so then we're going to go ahead and go back into doing this we're going to pop that we're going to go and grip them in they're going to blink here in about three seconds and or not we're going to go an ice bound fortitude i'm going to go ahead and stun that mage i'm going to drop the zone right there keep my chains of ice up and we're going to go ahead and burst again and this time i'm going to throw out a couple of death strikes they have really nothing to come back from with so and we're just going to win right there so basically once again they kind of got a little screwed on our lichborn and didn't realize death strike wouldn't heal if you used it on a uh ice block which is kind of dumb i don't really see why that works that way but okay <laughs> but good duel all right we are dueling a rogue now he's gonna go ahead and open up with the sap i didn't have a moment to really hit him with the death and decay so we're gonna sit this and we're going to wait until he cheap shots before we trinket he went ahead and go went straight into the tr uh, cheap shot which is not a good choice for him we're gonna go and do that get our pet out hit him with that we're gonna stun him and then we're going to go full ham burst on him right now we're gonna hit him with everything we got boys we're gonna go ahead and lichborn and start casting that out we got blinded that's a re but the pet should still be on him yep the pet's keeping him in combat 
Pat's not gonna let him get away with it. We're gonna go ahead and drop our Lichborn, or drop our Death and Decay. And he killed our Lichborn, which is kind of not good. It's kind of bad for us, but we're not in trouble just yet. We're once again going to uh, try and interrupt him on his next go. He's going to snap over and over again. All right. And we're going to immediately hit him with the Icebound Fortitude. We're going to get our Dot up immediately. That's the first thing. We're going to get our Sanguination proc up. We're going to go ahead and use our Death and Decay. He did a lot of pressure there. And so we got to make sure that we don't fall too far behind. We want to stay offensive. That is the, that is our goal in life. And I'm just going to sit here and Death Strike spam into him a little bit with my Sanguination. And he's not going to be able to get anything done. And he's down. Down and out for the count. Good duel. Let's see if he's down for it. He's putting on his poisons. All right. Three, two. I'm going to drop it over there. And nope, didn't get him. So he's going to sap us. We're going to wait until he does the kidney and we're going to drink it the kidney. You open up with it. So we're going to go ahead and go straight into this. We're going to get our pet out. I'm going to go an AMS so I can stop that poison damage. I'm going to stun him here. All right. We're going to eat some food as soon as we possibly can. This poison is killing me. I went ahead and Lichborn. It's really not the way you want to be using Lichborn there. But it's better than dying and getting really far behind that way. So we're going to go and eat some food. He's going to sap. We have our Icebound Fortitude, so I'm going to use it now. I'm going to go ahead and Death Pack right out of that. And then we're going to go to Bursting on him. I'm going to go ahead and pull up my Dual Wield set, and we're going to hit him hard. He's going to get the Blind, but he still has my Dot on him and a Pet on him. There's no way that he's going to be able to get out of this. So we're going to stun him here. We're gonna pop our remorseless. We're gonna go ahead and AMS the dot damage. And then we're gonna boom. GG. Good duel, dude. Good duel. Now you know how to duel on a two-hand frost TK in the Shadowlands pre-patch. Hit like if you liked the video and make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more DK content from me all throughout Shadowlands and beyond. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you all have a great day.